Hi, Sarah here for the UK Scrap Addicts Creative Team. Um, today I'm doing a layout that is using alphas, which is this month's challenge, and trying to use them in different ways. I've chosen to try and make my alphas a quite a big feature of my layout and also to do them on an angle, as you'll see shortly. So to begin with, with my layout, I did cut down some mixed media paper which tends not to warp as much as other cardstocks so that I can add lots of water and mixed media to it and I'm using these um, mermaid markers by Jane Davenport there a intense water colour in a little pen with a brush on the end they work really well they're really easy to use and the colours saturate the paper really well and and nice and bold as you can see because I've added water first the colors are blending themselves together and doing their own thing there I did do a test piece before I didn't just slap this on here I did choose some colors and make sure that they weren't going to become murky together and I'm also using my mind the scrap October kit so I have matched up my colors with that too so for this month we do have a sponsor again which is Crafty Ribbons so if you want to join in and make your own layout using alphas and some ribbon if you fancy it then you can enter yours into a random draw and one person will win £25 worth of vouchers for Crafty Ribbons and I think you do have to be in the UK to enter as far as I know. So I'll be leaving links below for both the mind the scrap kits and also crafty ribbons shop and the links to all the uk um scrap addicts social media bits like instagram facebook and um the blog itself so you can go over there and check out how to enter the competition as you can see here i'm just blending out the um watercolor off my layout with my brush just to smudge the colors together a little bit but i don't dab up any color because i want it to be nice and saturated it does look a lot more intense in real life but because we're getting towards winter and the weather's always a bit overcast i'm having to use my lights a lot more now what i've done here is just trimmed all the way around the edge taken off a little piece from all around the edge and then i will back this onto some pattern paper in a moment now I'm just using this um, removable adhesive to stick down my photo and now I'm coming in with a um, marker this is a paint over pen and I think the colour's called unicorn and this one's a medium um, tipped one and these are also by Jane Davenport and we're in the mixed media kit for mine the scrap the previous month and as you can see I'm just drawing some lines that join approximately to where I want the photograph to be and once I've drawn these down I come back in and do some loopy lines which will make up a bit of a spider web uh, mixed media background as I go along here so because these pens are paint over it means that they don't react with the background that's already down they're made specifically to paint over um, these um, watercolors so as you can see here I'm just adding in a bit of a spider web ish kind of looking design it's not the best uh, illustration of uh, spider web but it, it does the job you get the idea so I'm just adding my lines in here and then I add a few more at the bottom and it will look like the it's clinging to the paper cluster once I add that in which is why I keep adding my photo back in to have a bit of a guideline of where I think that it will end up so that I have them all the web bits going in the right direction I also use the angle off the web to add my um, title so that it stands out nicely and it's following a bit of a line down the down the page on an angle and I just wanted to add a, a little extra one down here so that's what I'm doing there and that is my background finished so as you can see I have 
grabbed a pattern paper which I'm going to use to back my mixed media piece on because my mixed media paper is under 12 inches so I tend to cut it down a little more and then add a background to it depending on what I use I most of the time will go out the middle so that I'm not wasting my pattern paper but if I'm just using cardstock I do keep it the whole piece behind it because it does help stop the paper warping because no matter what I seem to always find that the paper warps just a little so it does need to get stuck down so it doesn't curl at the sides and things so as you can see now I've just stuck that down and I'm bringing in my alphas which are large ones which are nice and bold and I'll be um, choosing what my title is and this says Hop Tune which is over on the Isle of Man um, that's what we have instead of Halloween we have Hop Tune which is a uh, Manx traditional version of Halloween <laughs> and as you can see here I'm just adding some white cardstock behind my photo because I want uh, my photo to pop and I feel like it matches well with the web and I think it will help it stand out a little more rather than get lost because of the background being so bold and this picture is from sometime in the 80s and I've got a turnip there because that's what we have we don't have pumpkins <laughs> a little turnip lantern so the picture is a little uh, muted with the colours and so I wanted to, you know, no filters. <laughs> I wanted to um, make sure that the picture did pop by adding some white, um, black and white layers behind it just to draw your eye into it a little bit more. So here I'm just adding this cute bat paper, which is the other side of the Halloween word paper. And then I will add that other piece behind it, which has the words on, which matches the border around the edge so it all works together well so I'm just trimming that piece down now and next up I'm just going to add a bit of distress ink this is I think it's wilted violet this one and I'm just adding a little bit around the edge it's very subtle it's not a very obvious purpley color behind um, around it because I'm using it mostly on the black but I do add a bit to the white bat layer as well which is a little pops a little more but it's mostly just because uh, basically because my trimmer blades a little blunt so there was a bit of a white sort of edge so I decided just to add a bit of ink to it plus it goes well with the colors in the page anyway so now this is just cheap foam from the kiddie section at the um, hobby craft apologies if you can hear my little boy giggling in the background um, as per usual <laughs> um, here I'm using the stamp which also came in this month's mine scrap kit and I'm just going to add a few of these lines of stars all over the place around the photo and down a few of the lines of the webbing bit as well and um, now I want to add a little more white to my background so I'm using some distress white ink and just adding a few splashes of that all over the background which kind of looks like a starry sky so I might use this technique towards Christmas but for a maybe northern light style background because I think that would work quite nicely because it does kind of look like the night sky rather than just splish splashes of white ink so I've grabbed these little ghosts that are from the kit as well and what I'm doing here is writing um, the start of the Hop Tune song which is a Manx traditional song so I've just written a couple of the lyrics there and it's a little speech bubble so of course the little ghost at the top is going to be singing that up there as you do <laughs> so um, I'm just popping these up on foam this foam is um not too thick it's um it's it doesn't pop up off the page too much it just adds a little bit of a subtle amount of um dimension but not too much so i also do the same to these 
but this time I'm just popping up the part of the ghosts that are not going to be on the photo so that they lie a little bit more um, flat to the photograph so that they're not on a angle. So next up I want to add some a bit of interest to that bottom corner so I grab one of the brads that was also in the kit and I take off the arms of the brad and just add some foam tape behind it instead so it just can be used like that instead of um, having to punch through my paper and then I'm just gathering a bit of a cluster to add at the bottom. These word stickers and also that 31st of July are from Mrs Brimbles and I'll leave a link to her shop as well which is also where I got my mermaid markers from so I'll leave you a link for that and again I'm just popping up um, that haunted house just to add a little more dimension as well and this um, brad has got foam which will keep it popped up too and I'm adding this little camera which also came in the kit just to the side there and I'm pretty much done now I just go through and find some sequins I use my doodle bug design ones which are teeny weeny pots of them and I use the purple the aqua blue green and black ones and I just dot them around in about four different places and use one of each just in a, a wonky triangle I guess <laughs> you call it which is uh, I quite often will do that kind of shape around them because things look good in threes so now as a finishing touch I'm just adding some Heidi Swap colour shining gold just to add a little bit more gold because I've got gold title and gold little background to the witch brad so I just add a little more gold there and that is me done so thanks for joining me today make sure you go and check out what everyone else is making this month and um, I will leave you with some photographs <laughs>